BioBalance HealthCast, episode 169, Preventing Cognitive Decline. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to this edition of BioBalance HealthCast. Today we are continuing a conversation that we were having in our last uh, HealthCast about cognitive decline and a workshop that Kathy and her office staff attended uh, on hormone replacement, uh, age, age management age medicine, management medicine. Uh, those kind of things. And, and one of the topics that was presented on at the workshop was cognitive decline. And mm -hmm. so in our last podcast, we talked about that and sort of the global dimensions of why it is relevant. Today, we want to pick up again uh, and talk about the work of Kenneth Jansen, MD, from Boca Raton, Florida, and the workshop that he presented in which he argues a case. He says that in his practice, he does these things. And other doctors who are interested in new ways to approach these challenges for their patients and help them lead better and healthier lives ought to consider doing some of these things. Mm -hmm. So he makes the argument that modern medicine is moving in the direction of focusing on early intervention and preventative moves to halt diseases that are that are significant diseases. And the ones Only he mentions are things. heart disease and stroke. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a lot of education and knowledge now mm -hmm. about the uh, putative course of somebody that's, you know, a walk and heart attack. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can look at them and see. Mm -hmm. And so there are things they now know to do so that it's done before the heart attack. Right, and that's uh, the whole idea behind um, cholesterol lowering drugs, mm -hmm. which it causes other things, but they are preventing heart attacks with that, and they've done that for the last, the standard of care has done that for the last 18 years. Well, and blood pressure medicine, cholesterol, things like that, and they'll say, doctors will say, you know, you don't really have a crisis right now, but we're gonna put you on this mes uh, medicine so that 10 years from now, you don't have a crisis. Because blood pressure medicine is just preventive medicine. Yes. And we don't really look at it that way, oh, I have high blood pressure here, mm -hmm. I'll take this, mm -hmm. but it's, High blood pressure in itself isn't causing a problem, a symptom usually, except maybe headaches, mm -hmm. but it is preventing you from developing heart disease and having a stroke. So it's a preventive measure and no one discusses it that way. Yeah. And they don't even discuss cholesterol lowering drugs as really a preventive measure. Right. But, but these are becoming more and more common in normal medical care. Right. But they're not, but as he says, they're not specifically saying, oh, this is preventive medicine. Right. I mean, you're more likely now to get those things from your, from your GP right. as opposed to being referred to a cardiac specialist who says, whoa, we got to do something. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to see people once they're, I mean, we don't want to get them to the stage where they're sick. We want to see them when they're sick, but, right. but, but we don't want an individual to get sick before we see them. And that is how I was trained, basically. It wasn't in a preventive manner, manner. but we haven't added... Mm -hmm. cognitive decline or the inability to think clearly to our preventive measures that right. are done every day uh, in doctor's offices. We have osteoporosis, we prevent that. Diabetes, cancer, general and inflammation general issues. General inflammation and uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, that's a, we're preventing inflammation there by giving the drugs that we give right. to shut the inflammation down in the joints so the joints aren't damaged more. Right. And it also helps pain. All of the autoimmune diseases have to do with inflammation. Inflammation causes aging and damage to, to your organs. And so pain causes aging. Yes. You'll age a lot faster if you're in chronic pain. That's true. You That's know. true. So, so all of these things are preventive measures, just not dis discussed that way. Mm -hmm. But we'd like to add cognitive decline, and he would like to add that right. to his preventive planning for each individual patient, because he does individualized medicine. Yeah. I, and I believe he's, uh, he's a uh, senogenics doctor. Okay. So he's always into planning how to avoid illness. Mm -hmm. So when he's doing this, he has an interesting um, testing method that he described he described each individually, but you'll in his place you'll describe them because they are <laughs> testing methods that are used in They're counseling. They're often more common in counseling or psychology. If you study cognitive processing in psychology, you would be more aware of some of these tests. And Dr. Jansen apparently uses these tests to track his patients' progress as they age uh, to see 
there, there are five tests that he talks about in his presentation, and, and he says, we, we give them short tests for each of these five domains, mm -hmm. and we see if there's a slippage in any of these domains, and then we, we try to intervene on that and say, what can we do to bring this back? Mm -hmm. So the first test that he gives is a test for composite memory. And the simplest explanation for that is like uh, word recall. You know, if, if, do you reach for a word and find it? Do you struggle for a word and, and it comes? Uh, also, in addition to word recall, it's uh, geometric uh, vision, uh, pattern recall, pictures, uh, things like remember a road map. You, know, mm -hmm. you take this left turn, take that right turn, and, and you're there. Or something that you've seen like a photograph that you mm -hmm. would recognize it again because you remember it when you see it. Like finding your way from um, your house to the store. You may not know one street name, but you visually know how you get there. Yeah. And that's something that's lost if you lose your composite memory. Well, that's another, you know, we're talking in the last thing about differences between people, especially in teams. My wife knows every street name in the world. <laughs> oh, that's over on Rose Avenue. That's over on Clifton Street. <laughs> I know how to get there. Yeah. And I know where to go, but I could not tell somebody what street? I, I could tell them, you know, go to the big uh, billboard and turn left by the warehouse. The visual markers that I have in mm -hmm. my head for what I see in that place. But she knows the street names and can <laughs> tell the turns. That's so. amazing. And that's and everybody's a little different in how they think and how their processes work. He's looking for normal mm -hmm. or not normal or degree of not normal. And then he's following up. He tests and then he treats and then later on he follows up on this type of memory. Yeah and sees how, how well he's progressing and how well yes. his patient is. My wife will very politely ask me when we're going somewhere, <laughs> I'm just curious, why are you going this particular direction to get where we're going? Because you're a guy. And I will say, <laughs> I, I'm trying to disguise my level of cognitive decline by <laughs> pretending I know which way to go. <laughs> Yeah, guys just wander around and oh, they yeah. find well, it. Well, you know, it's that cowboy yeah. thing. You don't ask for help. <laughs> uh, the second cognitive test that he will get uh, to people is a, a processing speed uh, test. How quickly do you get it? You know, if there's a math problem and you're looking at it, how quickly do you get it? Or if they show you like one of these things is out of order, which order should be mm -hmm. the correct order? How fast, how you fast can do you work on that? Mm -hmm. But also, like if you're driving a car and a light goes from yellow to red, and, and it clearly means accelerate. And you're not talking you know, on your or, cell or from, phone. No, and you're when not. it goes to <laughs> yellow from green, <laughs> that means hurry the heck up. Uh huh. I and can you do that means. fast? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I always hurry the heck up. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I've seen you drive, and <laughs> yeah. you do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah it's one lead, of my faults. Lead is coming built in in your shoes. Yep. Uh, Sorry. The third level is executive function. It, well, your excuse is always, "I'm a doctor." <laughs> no, it's, it <laughs> I'm, used I'm to be. Lives. It used yeah. to be, but I'm not delivering babies anymore. So, <laughs> the the third level is executive function, which is your decision making process and matrix. How do you solve problems? And how well do you solve problems? And can you solve a problem? Can you solve a problem? Uh, but it, it's intriguing, to me at any rate. It's mm -hmm. intriguing to find out how people think. How do you go about, you know, wh where do you start? Do you, do you do inductive or deductive reasoning? Do you work mm -hmm. from this end or that end? Do you, are you able to... Explain inductive and deductive. Uh, for for ends, all of us you know, who... It's like the, in math, it's the greater than or the less than. Mm -hmm. With inductive, you have a bunch of isolated facts and you reason to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. With deductive, you have a conclusion and you pull out a specific example. Mm -hmm. If all men are stupid, then this is a male, so <laughs> therefore he is stupid, you know, which is a... <laughs> A logical syllogism with a fallacy that's inherent. So deductive is more like diagnosis. Yeah, Somebody comes exactly. in with all these symptoms and then you have to figure out what they're related to and, and what caused them and then for the you treatment. Deduce, deduce. what that's the it. problem is. That's right. That's it. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning so much about <laughs> about testing and about how how you look at how a brain functions. So yeah. Go right ahead. Well and and the <laughs> last one is complex attention. Your ability to attend on multiple channels to multiple things at the same time. You know, what is the, uh, for, for instance, the way it, it sometimes will manifest, uh, as I get older, one of the things that I am noticing is that my hearing, my sort of global hearing, is dropping off in the higher and lower ranges. Mm -hmm. And so I now have to focus my attention. If I'm sitting in a room with a TV going over here and a conversation going over mm -hmm. there, I can't absorb it all the way I could when I was 30. Mm -hmm. I could track the ball game and the conversation. Right. Now I have to focus on one or the other. And when I do, like if I'm focusing on the ball game and my wife or my son speak to me, 
they have to like get in front of me and get my attention <laughs> and they say I'm talking to you mm -hmm. and I'm like I, I didn't register sorry but it's because that uh, complex attention mm -hmm. is impacted by the hearing loss which is age related you know it mm -hmm. has to do with the uh, uh, solidification of the fluid in the ear canal, mm -hmm. which you would know the terminology for. I, I don't. don't know the terminology you for don't that, know that, but I know that they get that. What kind there's of doctor kind of, are you? <laughs> the, bo the bones yeah. that that hit the tympanic membrane get kind of arthritic. See, see, she just needs a couple seconds. She starts to come up with it. But it's not fluid. It's a <laughs> And the they're, hair follicles. They're bone, and, yeah, yeah. That's, that's your balance in the mm -hmm. bones, and the bones ha vibrate, and we get less elastic as we get older, hopefully not totally right. not elastic because we need those bones to bump up against each other and move if they if they're solidified if they actually cleave to one another then we're not going to hear as well the tympanic membrane or the drum well, it of the vibrates from the sound waves be, the yeah. pressure of the sound waves coming mm -hmm. in and then your brain translates now that. i'm not an ent and please don't <laughs> please don't you can ask your ent this they'll probably have a, a better answer but there are lots of different reasons for hearing loss but that's the most common aging one. But you may just simply one. have a waxy buildup, which is pretty <laughs> ugly, but that that causes it too. It's like a plug that. in your ear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's something you can do something about yourself. So sometimes. what Dr. Jansen says is historically, medicine has waited for a cognitive decline. Uh, it looks like early stage Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. or it looks like uh, something really senility. severe, not just you can't remember words. Something. Right. Yeah, really you wander severe. away from home and can't find your way back. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not like where did I put my wallet and my keys? I, mean, I know people that are 20 that search the house every day because they haven't trained themselves to have a particular place to put that stuff. <laughs> and, and so whenever they need to leave, the whole family has to help them find it. Mm -hmm. Or not. Or not. Dep depending on whose house they live in, because not me, I'm not doing it. Uh, <laughs> you, you figure okay. it out, find a place, make a place, use a place. You know, plan your work, so, work your plan. So. That's not cognitive decline. No, that that's, could that's be anybody, stupidity. but <laughs> I can't fix that. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so we have so we have to notice a difference in someone. We have to know what they're like, and they ha they usually and know how they've changed and how they've changed. Yes. So when we're looking at patients, and you see a different doctor, a different provider, a different something every day, or excuse me, every year when you go in, they may not notice this until it gets really bad, but. They're not really looking for it unless you bring it up, and you should bring it up if that is an issue for you. You shouldn't be afraid of the diagnosis that you might have because getting it earlier is better. And that's, I mean, intervening earlier is better. So it's just like any other disease. We need to know that, and your doctor may not see it, or you may see the nurse practitioner, or you may see a PA. And they may not notice the difference in you, but your family does, right. and you do. Well, because they only see you once. I mean, if you're in reasonably good health, yeah. they only see you once a right. year for your checkup. You and know, if you have right. a cold, they're not looking for cognitive decline. Right. So you have to bring that up as one of your issues, and then they'll then they'll attend to that issue, hopefully. Did but we're trying to we're trying to put cognitive decline in the same category as heart disease and lung disease and the prevention of all of these different illnesses, diabetes, right. obesity. We're trying to put it into that so that doctors will be trained to look at the early stages, test it maybe, well, or just ask the patient about it. Examples of where that is beginning to happen mm -hmm. that he gives. Uh, drug therapy for early to moderate stages of Alzheimer's and memory loss. That's treatment though. And that's treatment as soon as it's diagnosed. As soon as it's diagnosed, but mm -hmm. it's still in an effort to prevent further decline. Right. Or to slow the decline process. Or to make people, make us more functional if we need that. Mm -hmm. And then I can't say this next word. <laughs> Cholinesterase inhibitors are the type of drug they use. Mm -hmm. And it's like Aricep, you've heard of that medication. So that's a drug that we use to help our brain, help the neurotransmitters in our brains work so that we can actually it actually works on not the brain itself, but on the, the liquid in the brain between okay. the neurons. So it's a cholinesterase inhibitor. So it, it allows two nerves to talk to each other longer. Because it's you, the fluid in which the synaptic cleft does its work. Yes. Okay. That's, that's what it is, cholinesterase. That. Yeah. Right. So it's trying to get that system working better by mm -hmm. using this inhibitor. The, it inhibits 
the enzyme that breaks down cholinesterase. So that's, that's a description of the drug, but that's, that's what we've got right now. And Exelon is a newer one, mm -hmm. but they, we have two drugs to treat this with. Now we're not talking about people who have hormonal loss early on and can't remember the name of their dog. We're, tra we're talking about re diagnosed people and treating Alzheimer's. We're also not talking about people that have memory loss due to emotional or psychological trauma. I mean, I've had a lot of patients that experience a dissociative process and they may not remember any of their life before they were 12 or they may not remember the sixth grade year uh, or if you have a traumatic car accident or something and you don't have the organic brain injury right. you, that which won't get back uh, the trauma memory the horror of the accident you may you may remember walking out of your house and waking up in the hospital mm -hmm. not remember anything in between for months or years thereafter and that's trauma related that's not due to brain damage. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not talking about that sort of thing. That's, That's a true. different issue. There, this is a very complex issue. We don't mean to be t making light of the different varieties of, of memory loss. Not at all. But we're trying to, we're trying to sort out the age-related memory loss. So memory loss that comes from getting a year older and having our, our brains shrink, having our neurons not work so well, and hormone loss. So. This is what we're thinking, we're talking about as aging changes. And so apparently what Dr. Jansen does and what he recommends that other physicians mm -hmm. like you do is consider whether or not hormone replacement treatments or hormone level managements mm -hmm. can positively impact this cognitive decline mm -hmm. that historically was thought to be inevitable for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he says, if you are willing to consider that, then you start to look at what are the positive inhibitors of the decline mm -hmm. and what are the more risky things that, that may have other side effects mm -hmm. and, and he identifies variables that he says may be protective right hormones that we can replace that are protective i mean the first one on his list is testosterone right. because that has the most most effect on the brain for both men and women and mm -hmm. men don't get the estrogen benefit so uh, dhea which is an oral over-the-counter supplement can be taken usually if someone someone's not on testosterone they can take DHEA to to help their testosterone mm -hmm. now this doesn't work in women without ovaries and it doesn't tend to increase testosterone because that's where it's made in women and after our ovaries go into senescence or become quiet and asleep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then we can't make testosterone out of it so often we make estrogen out of it so I recommend DHEA in very small amounts to women and only if they're not also taking testosterone. If now they're for not, also not taking, taking testosterone. testosterone. Now for men, DHEA can be taken with testosterone, but it's better if it's not, and it should be stopped if testosterone is started. So it's kind of an either or on the DHEA and testosterone. This is not his opinion, this is my opinion. Right. Now, uh, insulin growth factor is, is one of the metabolites of growth hormone. So there is in Europe they are replacing insulin growth factor mm -hmm. to actually help with um, mentating with thinking and insulin growth factor works like growth hormone on the brain so they're replacing it there we don't have the ability to do that here he did he didn't suggest that we did but that's mm -hmm. one of the options mm -hmm. elsewhere growth hormone is an option in the US but it is very difficult uh, and very controlled by the FDA. So even though that would help cognitive decline, very few doctors are um, set up to offer this. Right. And I don't offer that just because it's a very complicated. Well, and the restrictions make it so complex to try to use. <laughs> I know the FDA has made it almost a non-drug. Even right. if you need it, mm -hmm. you have to either be a, gro uh, a, growth, um, a growth hormone deficient child right. or you have to have a an injury that would cause you to need growth hormone and you have very low growth hormone to start out with. So they don't recognize aging right. as, as an indication that, mm -hmm. for growth hormone. Now estradiol for women is also something that I recommend to, to prevent brain damage as we age. Now he says progesterone and pregnenolone and because we're quoting him, I'm just, I'm suggesting that I've not found those to be helpful, mm -hmm. but they're on his list. He must have a different experience with it than I. Well, so, and as we were discussing this, that's what you pointed out to me, that that you were pleased at the overlap. Mm -hmm. if, if he's presenting on this you know, cutting edge awareness level that 
the first five of these things are all things that you know about and consider and use or don't, mm -hmm. depending on the individual situation. But the other two aren't things that you found to be particularly useful. But now that he suggested this to you, you're looking for more supportive data mm -hmm. to decide if that's a thing you need to start doing. Right. That's how that's how medicine and scientists work. Yeah. So that's that's those are things that. I use and offer to patients often if I think it's if I think it's important and I think it would help them then the first four things are things that I would offer growth hormone so those is not are variables so variables mean the hormones may vary they, they may fluctuate in their level and and relative content and so you can play chemistry set with them but they see. all all of the ones that we described de right. decline with age and his suggestion is manipulating these could have potentially positive results. And there's a lot of studies that say that they do. Right. Then there are some that he says could have negative results if you don't know what you're doing and you aren't careful about mm -hmm. it. And the ones he mentions there are cortisol and other stress hormones. Right. So so if you're stressed, your cortisol goes up and cortisol is an in, is a inflammation inhibitor, which would be one good thing, but it also in inhibits anabolic growth. Mm -hmm. Anything that is repairing or growing cortisol decreases. So because of because cortisol is something that increases with our stress, stress is something that we should attend to to try to decrease our our deprivation of hormones and therefore our loss of our thinking possibilities or capabilities, excuse me. And the second thing that he mentions is thyroid imbalance. And your thyroid mm -hmm. can be out of whack plus or minus. It can right. be overactive, it can be less active than mm -hmm. is necessary. Mm -hmm. So when he's saying thyroid imbalance, he's saying you have to pay careful attention to what the offset is. Is it over mm -hmm. or under? And how you bring it back into the range. Right. And, and one of the challenges there is the determin of, term, determination of what's considered to be normal mm -hmm. for men and women and for age groups. Right. And, so, and he didn't go into the specifics of that. He assumed we all knew how to do that. Right. So, but getting your thyroid back back to a normal range and a normal range that actually produces increased body heat and increased energy. And sometimes our labs look good, but we don't feel good. Mm -hmm. So where, where your energy is coming back, your hair grows, your bowels move. I mean, all of those things are That's related to helpful. thyroid. And I can't imagine, I mean, there's so many women who, who don't have that attended to and still have all the symptoms, but thyroid's necessary for your brain as well. So thyroid, is it's more dangerous to have a low thyroid than a high one in terms of brain function. Okay. And it's more dangerous to have a high cortisol than a normal one in terms of brain function. So that's what he was discussing is you have to balance everything. That made me feel better because that's yes. exactly what, what you've been I, preaching for years. What I've been preaching and what I do that no one that I in the area does is actually balance all the hormones that I can balance. Well, and there's somebody. a lot of medical resistance from other physicians <laughs> uh, and insurance companies to giving elderly people uh, thyroid medicine. That's true. And you know, without thyroid, we just kind of, I mean, we get obese yeah. and we can't think and we can't move around. Our hair falls out. We, we look bad. Uh, we, gain, we gain the belly fat mm -hmm. as well. And it helps us age if we don't have a thyroid. So what are they thinking? Is it cheaper what for us to be not here? <laughs> yeah, well, that may be what they're thinking. But they, they're all upset about thyroid medication that's very inexpensive. They should get excited about something else. Yeah. So. Well, and, and the last thing that Dr. Jensen talks about in terms of potentially negative variables uh, are uh, multiple hormonal imbalances that lead to what's called oxidative stress. Now, you need oxygen to live. But oxidative stress, it, it, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You need it to live, but oxidative stress breaks down your cells. So you need... So what, what does it mean precisely? What is oxidative stress? Oxidative stress is um, basically free radicals. You've heard of that? Mm -hmm. Oxidative stress produces free radicals, which cause cells to be damaged. DNA damage can cause cancer, can cause... Um, wrinkle, aging of the skin, aging of every tissue. So we need the oxygen, but when it breaks down in a certain way, um, the cells and what's in them and produces free radicals, then we age. It's kind of impossible to breathe and not have some oxidative stress. 
but this is a cellular level okay. oxidative stress. So but it's he's much worried more pure about science. it's much more pure science. Yeah. It's very hard to take that and relate it directly to um, medical symptoms. Yeah. But it's an overall aging process. It's one of the ways that we age, and, and we can slow it down, but we can't stop it. All right. Well, when you talked about free radicals, I thought you were talking about you know, Chicago 7 and Huey Newton and <laughs> Black Panthers. <laughs> that was All before that. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we hope you got something out of this that you might be able to take away and, and uh, work with your doctor about getting your hormones replaced or seeing if you have cognitive loss. And if you do, dealing with it instead of just being afraid, like many of my patients say, I was afraid to tell anybody because I was afraid they'd tell me. I had Alzheimer's, they take away my car keys. I mean, they've, I've had 50 year olds say that to me. Yes. So don't be afraid, just have it attended to. And you, you can see that there are ways to treat this. There are also ways to prevent it if you're afraid because of your parents having Alzheimer's and it does seem to be familial. So that is something that you shouldn't be afraid, take your fear out of this and then get evaluated by your doctor if you do have these symptoms. If you don't, prevent them. Do all of the things that are healthy lifestyle and get your hormones replaced as soon as possible. That's why I hate to buy Christmas presents early in the year. I hide them somewhere so that nobody will find them that I bought them for. And then when it's Christmas time, I can't find them. I have to go buy stuff again. <laughs> Put a list on your computer. <laughs> I, should, I should do that. All of us ADD here has learned list, list uh, modification and, and list memory. Go back to this. That's right. Thank you for being with us today. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.